in a quarter of a century, something has happened that none of us could have even dreamed of. Now, the question on auditing the Fed, it must be audited. Uh, the, the Fed doesn't want to be audited because they, they're allowed to use their profits for their own expenses. And then whatever's left, they are supposed to turn into the Treasury. So they probably don't want anyone to learn about their expenses. They, they probably live a grand life. You know, they have that uh, place up in Jackson Hole where they go every year for their conferences. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a grand life. And they probably don't want anybody to see their expenses. Now, of course, there may be other reasons they don't want to be audited. But I don't think a democracy or any kind of government can afford to have elements of it that aren't audited. Now, when the General Accounting Office has tried to audit various parts of the United States government, such as the Pentagon or any any cabinet level agency, they've often said that the information is so bad we can't do an audit. And and so what we have is a situation where the United States government puts private firms in prison for having bad accounting practices, but itself has no accounting practices that could even be audited. Exactly. Well, the Pentagon, in hearings four years ago, said they had two plus trillion missing, and I've got Rumsfeld on video saying I don't know where it is, and we're not going to ever tell you. And he brings up uh, Doctor Chu, the head of financing, and he says we're not going to tell you. It's it's just like Bernanke to Senator Sanders going, I'm not going to tell you where the money went. That's right. Uh, they, if they, they're not if they know, they're not going to tell you, and they may not know, or they may only know in part, or and they use a lot of it to buy foreign governments. You know, I've said this before. When I was uh, my Ph.D. dissertation chairman, was the second most powerful man in the Pentagon during the Nixon years, and he invited me to his office once. He wanted me to to do something for the government, and uh, and I asked him. I said, "How does the United States get all these foreign countries to do what they want all the time? How do they get them to do it?" He said, "Money." I said, "Oh, you mean foreign aid? We give them foreign aid?" He said, "No, no. We just buy their governments." We just give the leaders money. And he wasn't proud of it. It was He was just telling me a fact. That was just the facts on the ground. And I think that's true. We own the European governments. We give them money. Well, let me ask you this question then. What is going to happen that when the dollar finally dies or finally falls apart or it is no longer completely a monopolar system, for a season, a few years, they'll still be the big military. There won't be any way so, to pay it. Well, I understand, but... See, but we're, we're import dependent. So will they use the military right when it implodes, as the Rand Corporation says they may, to start World War Three as a cover, or will it just implode? I don't know. I think it'll just implode because there's no, there's no money. They can't... See, we're import dependent, and we can't pay for the imports. We can't feed people, mm -hmm. clothe them. There's no gasoline. You can't make deliveries. And they won't be able to buy off these governments. Well, I mean, even if we lose the That's world... That's the main point. That's the yep. main point. See, this happened to the Romans. You know, when the when the silver denarius, the main monetary unit, it got so uh, inflated that it was nothing but lead. It turned essentially into lead. The silver coin became lead. They couldn't buy off the barbarians. They didn't want the damn lead. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing again. So, it's the, so our paper is being destroyed by overprinting or whatever, overcreation. And when when the whole, when the thing goes, and the Chinese keep pointing that it's going to go, it's going to go, they're worried because they're holding a trillion dollars. And when it goes, you can't buy people anymore. You can't buy them. And When it so, goes, how fast will it go? I think if it starts, it'll be very fast because everybody, the stocks that the world holds of dollars are immense. You know, there's a trillion in Japan, a trillion in China. Who knows how much OPEC has? Probably another trillion. The Europeans, I mean, it's everywhere. And when it starts losing its value, it's like a stock market panic. Everybody well, sells, well, right? Mm -hmm. They sell. And they run for it. They try to get something for it in order to... And and so they're not going to all sit there and say, oh, we can't panic because we'll drive the price down. Have you ever seen that happen in the stock market? No. No. Well, it ain't going to happen with a dollar and all those... Idiots, those financial gurus who say, oh, the Chinese will never do blah, blah, they'll lose 
dollars, the value of the dollars. Well, why don't they say that about stocks? Well, so the they don't know what they're talking about. They're just spinning. You know, everything you hear is a lie, it's just like you say. Well, in closing, um, it was not barbarians that laughed at Geithner uh, when he told them everything was going to be just dandy and that and that they could have their money rise and that their dollar investments wouldn't fall, which is ridiculous. Obviously, keeping their yawn low has is, 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 is helped keep them, uh, you know, the dollar's high so they can keep selling their goods, for those that don't understand that basic equation. But in our final equation here, um, this is just like with the Romans in 300, 350, 410, when Alaric sacked Rome. You're right. Uh, the barbarians began laughing when they said, we'll give you lead as money, and they, they knew real value. And it looks like that's starting to happen. Uh, you know, like the Chinese were laughing at Geithner offering them lead. That's, I, think you, I think that's a good analogy, Alex. You summed it up. Uh, the Chinese don't want our lead. <laughs> All right. Well, what a, a lot of smart money, people that I've seen be right in the past are saying they think things are really going to – fireworks in October or who knows? Alex, just keep in mind, it, it wasn't that long ago that gold was $35 an ounce. What is it today? 970, yeah. What, what are people predicting the end of next year? 2000. 2000, yeah. The, All right. Now, now <clears throat> from – from the from 1971, when it was still $35 an ounce, to today has been the superpower time of the United States. We've been the superpower. We prevailed. The Soviet Union's gone. We've had our way with the world. So during the period of our greatest power, the dollar relationship from gold has changed from $35 an ounce to $1,000 an ounce. Now, yeah, if you can have that kind of collapse during your prime, what can you have doing your fall? It'll all accelerate. Uh, the Tyranny of Good Intentions, second edition, out. Just Google Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. Read all his great columns. We link to him over at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Dr. Roberts, always informative having you on. Thank you for spending so much time with us. Have a great weekend. I enjoyed being with you. Thank you. God bless you. Take care. There he goes. I'm going to come back, hit some more news. Then Daniel Sanjata, star of Rescue Me, and a lot more is coming up. Talk about 9-11 Truth. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us.